Hunter, it's me, Marissa. I'm about to show you how I work on drafting film using just colored pencils and acrylic paint. You're about to see a time lapse where I make this. Enjoy. Here I begin just freehanding with my colored pencil. Uh, the great thing about drafting film is that it is a bit translucent, so if I had a larger sketch or something else, I could lay it underneath my drafting film and trace it, or just lay out some guiding lines. Uh, here I'm just freehanding it though, it's pretty small, and I sort of have my idea worked out in my head. Uh, so this is where I begin, just with the colored pencil on the front part of my film. I also mark off a little bit of a border just so that I don't get out of hand. One thing to remember is that this is a uh, very slick film, so the oils from your hand can transfer onto it and sort of affect how the pencil or paint is applied to it. Uh, one good rule of thumb, if you are working on a very large piece where your hand might be on some of the areas that you're working on, just lay a, another piece of paper or a paper towel underneath your hand as you're working. Here I'm just continuing to draw some patterns. What I like about this material is you can get very detailed because it's super slick. You don't have to worry about texture like you would on a piece of canvas or even a piece of uh, cotton paper. Uh, there's a, such a smoothness to this material that's really nice. It's almost like drawing or painting on a panel. So here is where I flip over the film and I start working on the back. I use a flat white paint. It can be either uh, an acrylic gouache, a uh, matte acrylic paint, or even vinyl-based flash works. Anything that's opaque would work for this. I'm basically blocking in and um, preserving all of these parts. I'm going to start underpainting and using the white, we'll go ahead and block those parts out and keep those areas preserved. Uh, when I flip it over, you can see. Here I am beginning with my underpainting and I'm starting with color. This is just regular acrylic paint that I'm applying to the back of the film there. And you'll see if I get any on that white, it's not gonna show on the back because I've already effectively masked it. It's almost like um, screen printing where you're using uh, red masking fluid and you're painting on your screen, you are sort of preserving wherever you paint, and that's kind of how this white paint works on the back here.
Once this layer of underpainting has dried, I go in with my liquid or high flow acrylic paint to add some real light glazes across the back. How I blend it on the back will show on the front slightly muted because there's that layer of film in between it still. But it's a great way to get some atmospheric excitement in the background without messing up any of the linear work that you've done on the front of your film. And then you can flip it back over and begin to pull some more brightness and some more color out in the front. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm using, going back in with more colors to, to pull out some highlights and some brightness. What I love about this material is I can put a bunch of color on the back and I can still easily draw on the front of it without it affecting any of the ways that I draw. There's no texture, there's nothing else that I have to contend with. I can have bright rainbows on the back of my film and be able to draw as usual on top of it. And now I'm just continuing here with adding my paint. I'm really looking at this like a painter at this point and less like a drawer. Uh, and I'm, I'm really trying to pull out some highlights and push back and add some, some shadows and some more depth to this. At this point in the painting, I'm still using a lot of glazes. You can do lots and lots of layers on this very easily. And I think that's one of the things I like about it.
here you can see that it really is like working on a, a finely polished wood panel or something like that. You can get really great detail, really fine line work with your paintbrush. And the, the thing I like about this material is it doesn't eat up your paint or your colored pencils the way that a paper or canvas might. Uh, since it's so slick, it's really not grinding down the pigment in your pencil and you can really spread and get lots of fine layers of your paint on your piece of art. Here I'm just adding some more details around the focal point. I can go back in and draw with my colored pencil and then I'm using a black gesso that I really like. It dries very flat and it sort of pushes that blackness into the background and creates a nice flat uh, place for your eye to rest because when you do work on uh, drafting film in this way, it can get real busy. It can get super maximal when it comes to the detail and the excitement. And so it is nice to find something like a black gesso or a gouache that, that dries very flat as a source of contrast when you work this way. Here I have flipped my piece back over and am doing what might seem like a reverse grisaille. A grisaille is a, a painting term, but it's something that painters do where your initial layer is a black and white painting, underpainting, with layers of gray to show the tonal shifts within your work. And once those are laid out, it's fairly easy to, to lay washes and glazes of color on top of that so that you preserve your depth but then you can add your tones your, your hues on top of your tones what i'm doing here is the reverse of that i've already laid all my colors out on the front and i am blocking in the light and dark areas so that those are preserved on the front side when i'm adding the white here i am blocking out the parts i want to stay bright white or brightly colored
in the next part of this so-called backwards inside out grisaille, I'm adding my dark tones. So I'm adding the very dark parts, the parts I want to show up as much deeper and provide a lot more depth when I flip it over and look at it on the front. And then after that, I add some of my mid-tones. That's going to keep uh, anything that I've painted on the other side of that kind of just a mid-range. It's not going to be super bright. It's not going to be super dark either. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. So these are considered my mid-tones that I'm painting in here. The last thing I do to the back of this is that I coat the whole thing in white. It's going to make sure that whatever I mount this on or lay it on top of is not going to show through. If I can have a nice opaque layer of white on the back, then I'm good. And here when I flip this over, you can see how some of that background has been pushed forward into some brighter yellow and oranges and also pushed back into some darker purples, violets, and blues. And here I go in with some final details just to complete the piece. Pull out any, any pieces that need to come to the front, push back anything that's popping out too much. What I love about acrylic paint is that I can work really fast and I'm able to flip this over and, and back pretty quickly, even when I'm using glazing medium. But what's great about this material is I have successfully made paintings the same method with oil paint. You can do acrylics on the back and do all of your detail work on the front with oil paint. And it also gives this great luminescent quality that you're able to achieve with acrylic paints pretty easily. It's a really versatile film to work on.
there you have it, drawing and painting on drafting film. It's a lush but forgiving medium. I learned how to work on this through trial and error and it has really stretched my understanding um, of how I paint and how I create two-dimensional imagery. I'm sharing it with you in the hopes that uh, it'll show you another way to explore your imagery and your art making processes. Thanks for watching and I hope that there is some film fun in your future.